Hey friendly nerds, so we're building a homebrew computer and in order to do that I need to tell you how to install the MicroSysk virtual machine. MicroSysk is the computer architecture that uh, we are using to build this homebrew computer. I designed it specifically for um, homebrew machines, type machines. So we're going to, in this video, show you how to install it and then run through a very, very simple four line program that has three instructions in it and run it in the virtual machine on Windows, Linux, and Mac OS. In a moment, I'll show you the timestamps of where to jump to to install for your specific operating system. And then at the end of the video, the, the last several minutes of the video, we'll go through uh, the program and I'll have that timestamp in there as well. Let's get to it. All right, so we are going to set up MicroSysk the virtual machine on Windows. So I have this, uh, if you go to thinking usysk, MicroSysk on GitHub, which I will link to in the description, you can come over here and the first one is setting up your MicroSysk environment. Scroll down a little bit. We're going to, the quick start is generic to all platforms. We're going to jump down to the Windows one. And then we need to open um, uh, rubyinstaller.org. MicroSysk uses Ruby, which is not super amazing on Windows, but it does work. And so what we need to do um, is I recommend uh, downloading the RubyKit plus DevKit 2.7.1. So then I'm going to, once it's finished downloaded, downloading, I'm going to run it. I will have to accept the license and hit next. Uh, the defaults are fine. Definitely want to add the executable, associate with the RB and RBW files with the Ruby installation and use UTF-8 as the default external encoding. So you definitely want all three of these. Uh, so then we're going to install. Then this will take a, a few minutes. It's going to um, install all the components necessary. All right, almost done. So one important step is to make sure that you run RIDK install to set up msys2. Uh, this is important because any Ruby gem with um, native extensions will need this installed. Uh, and the virtual machine that we use definitely has some of those components. So it will open up this window. We're going to do one and three. We're just gonna press enter and accept the default. And so then it will do a whole bunch of scripting and running. So, and, and that is now finished and that should be done. Now I can just close this, go back to here. And so you can see I did the Ruby 271 with dev kit. So now we gotta go back up to the quick start. What I want to do is run the command gem install usysk or microsysk. I come over here uh, in the Windows start bar, I search for CMD, open a command prompt. So gem install microsysk. And if everything works, this should uh, download all of the necessary uh, dependency gems, including uh, microsysk itself. That's going to take a few minutes while it installs and compiles everything, all the dependencies for the GTK2 the glib pack two package here it got stuck for some reason so i ended up having to do Control c and i canceled it um, and then terminated the batch job and hit yes um, and then did a gem install again so i don't know if that you'll have to do that but okay that seems to have worked now let's try microsysk running it without any arguments and it does indeed tell us the usage so it is expecting a file. I'm 
going to show you how to get microsysc up and running on Linux. I have here a base install of Ubuntu. The quick start is common to all platforms, but we're going to go ahead and jump down to the Linux uh, install first. But we're going to start by doing this. And so then I'm going to show applications. I'm going to go to terminal. Um, in the terminal, we'll copy and paste this first line which sets up some secure keys so that it knows that it's installing software from a trusted source. Then we're going to paste this line in, which downloads the install script and installs the mm, stable version, but curl command is not found. So I'm going to do sudo apt install curl, just like it says put in my password, it downloads it and installs it. And then I'm going to, I can hit the up arrow or I can repaste it. Um, I hit the up arrow twice and I can just try running this command again. So then it will download and install RVM. So then I'll do RVM install 2.7.1. This is going to install Ruby version 271. Oh, I have to re, that's right. I have to reopen my shell window here. So I'm gonna close that, I'm gonna come back over here. I'm gonna go to terminal install 2.7.1. Now that I have that installed, I do rvm dash dash default use 2.7.1. And this will set 2.7.1 as, ah yes, I remember this. So you need to change your terminal emulator preferences. So I open up preferences and I go to unnamed my profile that I have running here. And under the command, I can run command as a login shell. And so I will check that and I can close my preferences and then I can try that again. And now that works. And I can RVM list and it is now using 271. Now I go back to the quick start over here. So I've I've done installed RVM, I've installed Ruby 271, and now I want to install uh, microsysc, uh, do the quick start. So I'm gonna click on this, it's gonna hop back up to the top. Then I go gem install microsysc. Okay, now that that is complete, I'm going to type microsysc and I get, I didn't uh, pass in any arguments, so it's expecting one argument of the file name for the code to compile and run. Uh, so we'll do that now. All right, and on the Mac, uh, it is similar to Linux. Um, if you go to the README, you scroll down, setting up your microsysc environment. Then we get over here, you can click on the Mac OS one. We're going to do the same exact thing. So then we're gonna to go to the quick start and do gem install microsysc. Okay, so now that we have that, we want to, all of the platforms at this point are going to be the same. Once you have the gem installed, then the main thing that you wanna do is open an editor and you can use any text editor that you want I'm going to download and install Atom because Atom is an open source product um, project that is designed to be a code IDE and it runs across all of the platforms. And um, if you're, you know, go download it on Windows or Mac OS, you can go download it on Ubuntu. It comes in the software package. You can just go find it in there and search for it and install it. Uh, but I intend to design a uh, some syntax highlighting and stuff for this. What I did is took the application that was in the downloads folder after I downloaded it and I dragged it to uh, the applications folder. And I will open, I'm going to open a project here and you should see that welcome guide on yours. Um, I have this folder, I'm going to do microsysc create a microsysc folder. And then what I wanna do is create a new file. First, 
Microsysk. So I have first dot microsysk. Okay, so once I have created this file, I can simply copy and paste this code into it. Now, before I run this, um, let me describe to you what this does. This is a very simple application. So line five here is declaring what I would call a variable reference. It's not exactly a true variable in programming terms, but um, it's basically some syntax uh, uh, sugar so that you, instead of referencing the same uh, register, uh, in this case, register one over and over again um, as one.mem or one.reg, uh, you can say designate it as the stack register um, and then use that from throughout the rest of the program. In this case, I've done that. Okay, next we're going to load 42 onto the stack. Um, and it's just an arbitrary number. Um, you know, 42 has some special significance, uh, but uh, it's just an arbitrary number that we're going to load onto the stack. Um, and the reason we're gonna do that is that when we run this, uh, the program will print out the stack at the end. So we can see the value of 42 that we loaded onto it. To do that, we're going to, I'm not gonna go into this, the nitty gritty details here, but we're gonna to have to load the value 42 into register three, and then copy register three onto the stack um, and push it onto the stack. Uh, and so you can see that this reference that we did here will reference um, one.mem, so it pushes it onto the stack address. So then you're going to, then to end this program, I'm going to copy the zero register into the zero register. The zero register is the program counter. Um, and the program counter tells the, the CPU which instruction it's going to execute next. And so by copying the current instruction into the zero register, it actually will jump to the current instruction. So this generates an infinite loop. However, because this always generates an infinite loop, the CPU handles this differently and actually interprets this as a halt condition to stop execution. So it will run through all of that, push 42 onto the stack and then halt. And that's what we're gonna do. And then I can change into that directory and then list. And there's my first dot microsysk program. So I can go microsysk. first.microsysk, and it will compile and run this. And there we go, and it's just three instructions. Um, it, when it hits the halt, it had executed two of them, so you can see that it executed those two instructions uh, pretty quickly. And it had on the stack, it has a hex value of 2a, which, if you don't know hex, is equivalent to 42. In future videos, I'm going to tell you uh, more details about this instruction set. There's actually two instructions that you need to worry about, the copy, which we've seen here, um, and the compute instruction. And that those things you can tell it to add, subtract, multiply, divide, um, and other kind of bit uh, manipulations. Uh, so what we're gonna go through all of that in detail in, an, in the next video. Um, for now, uh, this has your, been your first introduction to Microsysk. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed that. Um, in the next video, I'll go in much more detail on Microsysk and the language and how you use it. Um, it just has two instructions, so that it's not terribly complicated. Um, and we'll write some real code. It'll be great. I, I can't wait. My plan is to launch the video on Friday for that information. So make sure you hit the subscribe button and the bell notification so that uh, you see that video. And I will see you in the next one.